Core Practical Investigating Water There are two separate parts or experiments for this core practical. One experiment is to determine the specific heat capacity of water and the other experiment is to obtain a temperature time graph for melting ice. Pause the video and have a look at the aims. I've got four videos that will help you with this core practical. The videos are changes of state graphs, internal energy, specific heat capacity and specific latent heat. I'll add links throughout the video. Experiment 1. Determine the specific heat capacity of water. In the first experiment, we need to calculate the specific heat capacity of water by monitoring the temperature of water using a thermometer while heating it using a heat supply connected to a joule meter. I always say to my students, base your explanation on the calculation because the calculation tells you what you need to measure and then you can tell what equipment you need to use to make those measurements. So here's the calculation involving specific heat capacity. Let's rearrange it to make specific heat capacity the subject. So, to calculate the specific heat capacity of something, we need to know the change in energy, the mass, and the change in temperature. We can use a joule meter to measure the change in thermal energy. We can use a mass top pan balance to measure the mass. And we can use a thermometer to measure the change in temperature. I'm showing you here the equipment you need to use and how to set it up. Here's a step-by-step -step method to use to get your results. Pause the video and have a look. Here's some model results. Pause the video and use them to practice calculating the specific heat capacity of water. Here's how to calculate the specific heat capacity using the model results. The specific heat capacity of water is 4,200 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Your answer from your actual experiment should come out somewhere close to that value if you've done it right. Exam tip. A reason why you might not have achieved the correct specific heat capacity value could be due to some of the heat energy from the heater being lost to the surroundings instead of being transferred to the water. This heat loss could be reduced by putting a lid on the beaker. And that's the end of experiment one. Experiment two. Obtain a temperature time graph for melting ice. In the second experiment, the temperature of crushed ice must be recorded using a thermometer. The crushed ice must then be melted using a Bunsen burner and beaker of water as a water bath. The temperature must be monitored as the ice melts, then the temperature time graph must be plotted. I'm showing you here the equipment you need to use and a step-by-step -step method to use to get your results. Pause the video and have a look. Here's a blank table to use to collect your results. Here's some model results for your table. Use the model results to practice plotting a temperature time graph. Label the three main sections. Pause the video and give it a go. Just do a rough sketch if you haven't got any graph paper. Here's what the temperature time graph using the model results should look like. Can you explain the three different sections of the graph using ideas about kinetic theory? Pause the video and give it a go. Here's an explanation of the different sections of the graph using ideas about kinetic theory. Watch my video called States of Matter to learn more about kinetic theory. And that's the end of experiment two. Good luck with your core practical. Well, I hope the video was useful and it helped you understand physics better. Subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more. Bang the bell all over the place, smash that like button, and apart from that, work hard, be nice, and bye for now.